All right, so this is my review of the XPS 17 and XPS 15. Now, I went into this video with the intent of choosing one of these devices as my personal Windows laptop this year. Like, I wanted to use one of these new XPS devices as my actual regular daily laptop. So I'm gonna be, I mean, a lot of the conversation that we're gonna be having here is from my perspective of what I would want in a laptop, all right? So, uh, just right off the rip, these devices are heavier than you might think, or they might be heavier than you think. That's probably a better way to put it. The XPS 15, this is the same weight as last year's model. They both come in at four to 4.5 pounds, depending on how you configure them. But this is a smaller machine, so it's just dense. And same thing goes for the XPS 17. This machine can be equipped with a vapor chamber if you have like the higher end configurations. And that unit, like that vapor chamber configuration and the 4K panel configuration just adds weight to this system. So keep in mind, if you want something that's like a really light laptop, just look at the numbers of these things and compare it to other stuff that you might be interested in. Now, I really like the design aesthetic of the XPS devices this year. I really like that whole angled look that they have to these machines. I like the exterior and I also really like the carbon fiber interior. Now this material, I didn't notice this in the kind of first look I had on these devices, but this is a different resin or different finish than the previous carbon fiber. I actually like this stuff better. It's still soft to the touch and nice to use and comfortable to type on, but it's not as sticky. Like it doesn't feel as tacky as the old stuff. I use tacky like not as in like gaudy or ugly, but like like tacky as in like gummy. This feels like a smoother resin and I like it a lot. And it's also less prone to fingerprints. Like one of the things that I didn't like about older XPS devices, like how easily fingerprints appeared on the palm rest and all over the carbon fiber material, this feels like a better material to me. I also really like their screens. Like there's everything about them, the brightness, the color accuracy, the aspect ratio. These screens, both on the 17 and 15, look fantastic. I don't just mean like the thin bezels and just how clean and aesthetically beautiful it looks. I mean the actual panel itself is on point. Now I've seen both the 4K and the 1080p panels. And in my opinion, it's not worth getting the 4K panels. These are both 4K units. Uh, both the review units and the engineering samples I had were also 4K units, but it's a $400 upgrade over the 1080p panel. And on a screen size that's 17 or 15 inches, it's really hard to appreciate a 4K panel. Now here's the thing, Dell's website is a little bit confusing. In order to get the configuration that gets better video cards while still using that 1080p panel, you have to go into the work configurations instead of the ones for home, which is a little bit weird. The other thing I noticed is that the ghosting on these screens are still present. It's not something that's a big deal, but if you're someone that's used to like desktop monitors that have fast response times or fast refresh rates, these are 60 hertz panels with relatively slow response times. You won't really notice it outside of gaming though. The aspect ratio of 16 by 10, I think most people will appreciate that. You just get more vertical space, right? You see more comments when you're scrolling through stuff, you have more vertical real estate for like Premiere, Excel, whatever it is. 16 by 10 is money. The speakers, I've done a speaker test, so I'm not gonna do it again, but they sound good. When you crank up the volume, the bass is very vibratory. You feel it through the whole keyboard. Uh, the, the solution to that is just don't listen to music as loud, but it is a it is something that's present if you're someone that types with music cranking. It's very buzzy as you're going. Uh, okay, let's talk about the keyboard and trackpad. So this is where things get conversational. I like the keyboard. This is a keyboard that I think most people will like. The lack of a number pad seems to bother people based on the comments. Now, personally, I think that if they had put a numerical pad on these keyboards, it would have really hurt the design aesthetic of this thing. Like, I mean, they could have, there's obviously room to fit a number pad on a 17 inch device like this, but if they'd put it in, it just wouldn't look as symmetrical and it wouldn't be an XPS device. So I, I feel like it was a purposeful design choice to omit that. But if you need a number pad, you can just connect something over USB. Now the trackpad, Okay, we need to talk about this. The engineering samples that I had, I had a 17 and a 15, both had great trackpads. Then I got two retail units. I got an XPS 15 retail unit and an XPS 17 retail unit. And on both of these devices, the trackpad has a bit of a wobble. It's definitely more pronounced and more annoying on the XPS 15 unit. And based on what I've read from the emails and comment sections of my previous videos, this is a thing. This is 
an issue that is appearing not infrequently. And I think it's just a quality control thing from Dell. This shouldn't be an issue, right? This shouldn't be something that the users have to put up with. From what I've read though, it can be fixed. You can either put a piece of tape underneath or tighten the screw. But I mean like on a device that is this expensive and this premium from a company like Dell, this really should not be a thing at all. So if you do get one, you can either return it and get it replaced. Or if you wanna try doing the electrical tape thing, you can probably look it up on the internet. But it's just weird because the two engineering samples I had had perfect trackpads. Like, I'll just do this here so you, you don't think I'm going crazy. This is the 15. This machine, like, why am I even doing this? It's not like you guys can see it, but okay, maybe you can. So the wobble, do you hear that sound? Versus this, right? This is a rock solid machine, like or a rock solid trackpad. This has that weird wobble. Now, before I get into the performance, we need to preface this conversation with like, these are not two inch thick gaming laptops. These aren't gaming laptops at all. And I feel like because they're equipped with NVIDIA cards that are capable of gaming, some people expect these to have gaming level performance. They don't. All right, the 15 inch one has better thermal performance than the previous year's model. It's not great. I would consider it to be acceptable. See, I've been very critical of XPS 15 over the past two or three years because their, their thermals just weren't up to snuff. This is improved, but it's not great. The XPS 17 with its vapor chamber, I expected this to be miraculously awesome. Like I thought when I did my preview of it, that this would just blow my socks off when I actually got the re retail unit. It's good, but it's also imperfect. It's not like two inch thick gaming laptop perfect. What I think Dell likes to do is that they let their systems turbo up really fast to a really high clock speed, but then they bring it down really aggressively. So these temperatures will spike to like 99 degrees and then it'll drop back down to like 85. And this is different from, let's say something like a Razer Blade 15. That machine doesn't spike up in temperature. It has a more flat temperature profile, but it also doesn't turbo as aggressively. So I feel like a Razer Blade 15 is way better for gaming because when you're playing games, both your CPU and GPU are stressed for a very long period of time. So only for like four or five hours if you're playing games. But for something like this, an XPS device, these are geared more for just spike your workflows, right? Now, in terms of music production, I know that a lot of people have shied away from XPS devices in the past because of latency issues. I ran latency monitor on it just to see what was going on on both these machines. They both seem fine. Like I ran that test for over an hour and I never saw some heavy latency spikes. I don't know if that's like enough information for you guys though. I'm not a producer, but based on my limited testing, these don't seem to have any latency issues like previous year's models. Now these also do not seem to have Undervolting. I went around in the BIOS just to look around to see if there's something that I could enable to allow it. They do not have undervolting like previous year's models either. Okay, so here's the deal. At the beginning of this video, I said I would choose one, right? This was a harder choice for me than I, than I thought it would be. I originally thought it would be the 17 for sure, right? I wanted the performance, but this is a big machine. It's just heavier than I thought it would be. It's just more cumbersome than I thought it'd be. It doesn't even fit into my regular backpack normally. I have to change backpacks because of this device. Um, I'm gonna go with it though. I feel like the benefits that this gives are stuff that I like. It's just that it doesn't come without a cost. The weight for one, and it's just not as portable of a package as I'd like my laptop to be. But the overall experience on the XPS 17 is great. Now the battery lives on these two machines they're similar. I thought the 17 would run out quicker, but it's got a slightly bigger battery, 97 watt hours versus 86, and I'm getting seven hours of battery life on both. And this is with the higher resolution panel. So it's got pretty good battery management. So that's it. That's my XPS 17 and 15 review. I know a lot of people, if you're interested in buying one, you're gonna be drawn to the 17 because it's not that much more expensive than the 15. I think it's only $100 more on the base model. You just get a lot more material, a lot more device, uh, but just be, be aware of the weights, be aware of the numbers, just to make sure it fits in your, in your lifestyle. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. I'll see you guys next time.